Alrighty. Hello, everyone. This is Ron Halbert coming to you from Orlando, Florida. And you are on Friday Night Live. Before we get started, and I send Joe to Miss Lynn, my beautiful co-host, I want to ask you, is everybody excited? Raise your hands. Come on, show me some hands. Yeah, all right. 12 days, folks. 12 days. I think. If I counted right. But uh, I'm waiting for the day after and the day after that. That is really going to be exciting, I think. So uh, let me now turn you over to my beautiful co-host in St. Petersburg, Florida, Lynn Nakamoto. Hello, everyone. Marty, by the way, can you make me host? Thank you. Welcome to Friday Night Live. We are happy you're all here. Look at all those happy, smiling faces full of excitement and eager to see what this company is going to do for us and the whole world. So we are excited, aren't we? So today we have a great topic. This is a topic that has been suggested to us by Ash Mafara himself. And the topic is testing the final rollout. I think you'll find this topic interesting. I think it, for me, it was really interesting. It opened my eyes, you guys. Lynn Nakamoto is a lay person. I'm like most of you. I am not a techie. And I had all these preconceived notions about testing. I had no clue. When I learned about it, I said, my goodness, it was an eye opener. So you will hear from our old tech pros tonight. And we're going to start off with Collins, who's going to give us an overview of testing and the testing process. Take it away, Colin. Thank you, Lynn. I just want to greet everyone here. Uh, um, Marie de Gamo, hope you are doing well. Hope you are great. I uh, just want to greet all our panelists and those who are also attendee and also those who are watching online. So today we'll be talking about testing and the final rollout. The final rollout, yeah, that was like a connotation. We'll be talking about data migration. I think we've heard that a lot. Our CEO have said this a lot. You know, last time we talked about we are migrating from one environment to the other. We're migrating from to our data center. It's like moving a house from one old house to the new house. And we've heard our CEO talk about testing, testing. Now we are testing the product. We are doing this. So what is all about the testing? You know, and he said, you know, the tech guys will go and explain. So today we decided to come and break down. So all of us here, maybe today we'll start to appreciate those in Hyderabad, the QA team, the QA engineer, the great job they are doing together with our CEO, Ash Mofara. So normally I've been in, in testing for the rest of my life. That's where I started, you know, as a QA engineer, quality assurance engineer, work up to, to quality assurance lead which I manage team of, of testers. And again, as a, as, as, as a scrum master, last time we talked about scrum. So this is the role. So as a scrum master within the scrum team, I play as a QA engineer because I have to test the product. So what is testing actually? It's about ensuring that the software, the build that we see every day from all mail, Yahoo mail, all mail, sorry, all the products we have in our back office, all, the product, you know, whatever you see from go founder to all founder, we want to ensure that the products we have seen meet and exceed customer expectation. We are the customer, right? All of us, 1.3 million, 1.5 million founders. We are founders, but remember, we are also customers. If the product doesn't meet and exceed our expectation, what will happen to us? We'll run away. Because what will make us to live somewhere and come to something that is bad? You know, something that is not good. That is the reason the QA team are the gateway between the company and the customers. If they say no, it is no. If they say yes, it is yes. They are the people to put their, their final signature on every product. It is not Mr. Ash Mofara. He's the CEO. But he doesn't determine if the product is good. They only tell him that, yes, Mr. Ash Bofara, we are ready, take it out. We are not ready, there is nothing you can do. They are like the lawyer, they are the gateway. They said, yes, it is okay, you can put it out there. They put their final signature. 
So a lot of times people have said, oh, why Mr. Ashufa is not launching this thing? I said, you know what? I told people, he's the CEO, yes. Oh, he's the owner of Unpassive, but he has no control when it comes to software. He listens as well. He listens to the tech team, listen to all those in Hyderabad and say, yes, we are good to go. No, we are not ready to go. The only thing you can do is to get angry and say, but what is happening? And they will explain why it is taking this time, why they are doing what they are doing, because they need to follow process. You skip one process, forget it. There is no way you can skip it. You must go accordingly. When it comes to software development, you must go accordingly. You can, there is no shortcut anyway. This is what we want to put today before the founders. And when we will finish this, maybe you will love it and you start to understand what is happening behind the scene. Things that people don't understand, things that we don't know. And we believe that all of us here, 321 founders and those who are watching, it is just a free. You don't need to take it. You don't need to know. Don't, don't panic if you don't know it. Don't worry, it's just to enjoy. As Mr. Ashfara said, there is no certification, there is no pass or fail. It's just about understanding. So we can really appreciate what is happening. So we'll look at QA and I'll, I'll share my screen with you. We go through the process. Raul, I'll talk about the security part during the bill. Um, you know, there are also a compliance side because you cannot build a software without following compliance. There is, you cannot build a software without testing the, 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 the security. You cannot, you cannot build a software without migrating. M means moving from one platform to the other. For instance, I'm moving, Mr. Ash, before I talk about the dev development environment, you need to move from that environment, go to another environment where it's a QA environment where they do the quality assurance. From there, you pick everything together, which is another environment which is similar to the go live. Test it, that is where they call it user acceptance environment, where Mr. Ash, can go and play with it and say, yeah, thumb up take it to, to the life environment. Then they will bring it to where we can see it as founders. So we do the, 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 the last phase, we call it beta testing. We, as a user, you know, they do it. But what we want to concentrate now is the, 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 not the beta testing side as a founders, we want to concentrate on the alpha side. In in-house, what those guys are doing, where they are hammering, you know, Ms. Alpha called them good professional hackers. The QA team, they hack, as Raul always said, they test, they hack, they build, they test to make sure there is, it is defect-free before it goes out. And there is cycle and cycle of it. That's why Ms. Alpha can come out proudly and said, nobody can break the software. Go in, do whatever you want to do, play with it, you cannot break it. Because the quality assurance team have assured Mr. Ashbrad that there is nothing because before you go out, you must be 90, 95 or 96% sure that this software is great. If you are not 90, you cannot say 80. If you are not 95%, you cannot put your signature on that. You must be sure to tell your CEO that, take it out. So we want to do that and we'll show you. Let me share my screen and we go through the process. All right. Now, can you see my screen, Lynn? Just yes. Maybe, if you can see my screen. Now we're talking yes. about testing and data migration. That is final rollout. Why testing? Let's see why testing. Why testing? Why do we test? So testing is about gaining customer confidence. You need to gain your customer. If you don't test, forget it. Everything you put out will fail. And the customer will turn away. We are all customers. They'll tell you, you know what? Why should I leave this and come to this every day when I go in, it crashes. When I do this, things fail. It's not working. The software is not doing. So you need to gain the customer confidence. Two is to check software adaptability. How the software is adaptable to different environments. What you are doing. How is it adapt compatible to other environments? To identify errors. You know, you test to find out if there is error. There are errors in the software. Two, to avoid extra costs. You know, sometimes when you test, you don't test early in the cycle, what will happen? It is so costly. And the cost is not about money. It's about litigation, mitigation, all those type of things, lawsuit waiting for you. You know, this is about customer running away. You know, you have to pay back the amount, you know, trust, all of those things, loss of lives. 
You know, just imagine that we had a lot of scenarios where software were not test properly. What happened? The plane crashes. We talk about, you know, rocket launchers, all of those things. You know, we're talking about sending people to moon. And what happened? They said it was because of the software. 40, that is the cause, loss of life. We talk about financial savings crashing because the software were not test properly. Those are the costs. You know, people lost a lot of things, you know. And there's the second one, the third one is accelerate software development. So the more you test and they find error, they can fix it quickly and they can move on to the next phase. That's accelerate software development. Two, to avoid risk. There's a lot of risks around, you know. Things are, things are not moving well. You know, you can lose even, you know, your job because of that. That's, these are the risks that, that are involved, you know. And then to, to, to optimize business, what? Profit, profitability. The more your software is great, a lot of people come in what is profitable for everyone. So those are the reason why we test, to make sure customers' confidence in the software. They are, they are, really, they, they are really happy with the, what they, 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 they are seeing. And we said, you know, you need to meet customer expectation and even exceed it. You need to exceed. We are not doing to only meet, but you want to exceed customer expectation. Now, let's look at the type of testing. Type of testing, you know, so we generally classified into two main broad categories. We're talking about functional testing. I'll explain it, I'll break it down, and non functional testing. These are the two main categories. Of hey, test. Collins. Yeah. There's, no, there's nothing on the screen if you're trying to share something. Oh, you're not seeing my screen. No. I see the screen. I see the screen, Ron. Oh, we see oh, the all mine says is he's uh, started screen sharing. No, I oh, see yeah. It. Yeah, it's actively showing, Ron. It must be your end. Try to you're, maybe you're ex to exit and, and come again. back. No, no, no. It's you're, working fine, Colin. Okay. It's just me. Yeah. Oh, yeah, just you. Uh huh. That's all okay. Right. Go ahead, Collins. All right. So we're talking about the two, uh, uh, two type of tests inside the two general category of testing, functional and non-functional. What is functional testing? Functional test is about testing the functionality. For instance, all mail. When you break all mail into pieces, you can break it into different functions. Like for instance, the, 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 the contact functions, you know, where you can go and add your contact, that's a function, you know? And within that, 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 that particular module of contacts, you can break it again into little, little parts, event and stuff like that. Those are the functions. Can you really add an event? Yes. Can you add a, a, a date of doing something? Those are the functions. And you can talk about, for instance, your, 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 your contact list, you can talk about um, what again is email, where you can send email in and out, you can, Recall email, those are the various functions. Can you really do that? That is the functions. Can I do that? Can I send an email to someone? Yes. Can I add an event? Yes. Can I add people to my contact list? Yes. So those are the functions. So you are testing the functionality of what is there in email. And the non-functional part of it is about what? It's about it's something that is not related to the function I've just described, but it relates to to, 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 to the number of people that are using that, how many people can hit on that website? For instance, load. You talk about loading. Number of people coming to that site, you know, doing exactly what you are doing instantly. You know, one minute per second, one billion people coming with the software not crash. Talk about risks, you know. What, what are the risks? What are the, 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 the stress, you know? Can the software withstand this? Can the software withstand that? Can, is it light? You know, all of those things, they are the non your part. We think like it's not important, but it is very important. For instance, you build the function and one million people come there. We had histories where software company come up today and they crumble because the, the software couldn't withstand the amount of people coming. You know, those are the things that happen. Those are the non-functional part of it. You know, you talk about data leaks, all of those things. They are, these are all non-functional part. It's not related to the functionality. Yes, the, the engineers, they have built it based on the functionality because you can do this, do that, one person, two person. But when it comes to load, stress, you know, all of those things, those are the non-functional part of it, you know. So we will talk about that, we'll break that down. Now, let's look at what happened in testing. 
we want to look at the functionality. You know, in functional testing, there are more, you can break it down again into two types. You know, you can talk about manual testing, you can talk about automated testing. Automated is, you know, you build the code, you said, okay, it's ready. You can still break, break, break them and then use machine to test it because repetitive testing, there are things that you cannot do all again and again. So you can build a, a, a system to test the application for you, to go through that application and make sure, is it right? Is it this? Is it that? Is it that? Is it that? And manual is something that you do repetitively, do with your hand when they build a new system, you test. And then you can still break it down again and say, within manual uh, functional testing, there are two types, black box and white box. What is white? What is black, white, black box? Just think about your car, right? When you start go into your car, early morning, you're going to your job, what do you do? You put your key in, you start. What happened? Your engine, your engine start. When you change your key, right? Engine start, you drive and you go. The only thing, when you put your key and you change your, you change your key, what do you want to know? That my car can spark. I can drive my car smoothly. You don't necessarily need to know what is happening within the engine box. You, your, your, your duty is just put my key, start it, and go. But when it comes to white, this person, this engineer, they would not only want to know when the car starts, they want to know what is happening in the engine. You know, there is combustion, there is the, the battery, there is this, there is that, there is that, there is that. These are the white box testers. They test, but they want to understand what is happening behind. Now, coming again, looking at it, black box, say you look at it, what type of testing do you have? I want to break it down again. What type of testing do you have within that realm? You're talking about unit testing. These tests are the tests done by developers. So they, they write the code, they write their code, they test it themselves, right? They test it themselves. And they say, wow, great, pass. When they build the test, what they will do, they move it again, they push it to another environment. The QA team take over the products and they said they are independent because QA are independent of the whole organization. They take it. The first thing they will do, they go into smoke. Smoke is about testing the, 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 the major functionality, the major functions within that, that product. Say old mail, call it uh, um, um, old decks, whatever we have in our back office. They smoke it and say, wow, this is great. That is the first part of testing they will do to make sure all the high level components are working. Then if there's an, a new function, what they will do is they will go in and carry out system testing to make sure the system is running. Every new thing they have built, they have tested properly. Then after that, if there is any issue, they will report it back again and said, you know what? All of these things have failed. Can you please fix it? They fix it and they bring it back. What they will do is they will retest it again. There's another temple retesting. They retest all of those components that have failed. When they retest it, what they will do, they will carry out another test called regression. Regression is to check the other component because you have fixed it, yes, you bring it back, they integrate it. But they don't know if that integration will break another things within the, the company. They say, oh, man, you, you fix calendar, but calendar will break the, the other company. Like, you cannot, you cannot send an email out. You cannot add a contact. You cannot do this. All of those things that were working before, they are not working. Because it's like you bring something new, but you didn't tell the others that I'll bring this thing new, please. This is what it's supposed to do. The company come in and break everything. So they have to carry out regression tests to make sure all, all the rest of the things that were working before are still working. That's called regression test that you've not taken us behind. If everything is okay, you say happy days, you move now into system integration test and say, okay, all of the other software, are they working? Great. Then you move what into, you, you move now into other part of testing. Now let's look at the test in the life cycle in agile, uh, um, agile, uh, um, um, system. We talk about Agile Scrum system. What they do is this, the, the QA team will look at all the functions that they have given them. Say, for instance, I said, I want to build 100 screen. This is the first screen. They take it and they build it. What they will do is they will look at it. They say, yes, this is the screen. Because normally in Agile, last time we talk about user story. User story is about high level what you want to achieve. It's a high level. They will break it down into little something when they sit in the meeting they break it down into something called assessment criteria the smaller component so the qa team will look at that smaller component they will take it and write it into a form of a test case test case is what it's a 
a test case is a set of input value and at an expected result. So when I enter my username and I enter my password, what will happen? The system should lock me in. That is a test case. You know, I enter my, my, my username, I enter my password. Once I click OK button, the system should lock me in. That is a test case. And they can use that user screen, that login screen, to write about 10 to 15 test cases. You have to write positive and negative. What if I take my username and put it in the, the box of the, the password column? And I take my password and I put it in user column, I click OK button. Will the system log me in? They have to do all those negative tests because that is the, how they have the system. They try to do combination of things to see if that site is secure. Because in QA, there is no yes or no. QA engineer doesn't say yes. When you said yes, it is yes or no, it is no. The question in QA is why? If you said yes, why? No, why no? Why yes? The, oh, you need to answer that question because what they will do, they will try to go into that system to make sure they can break that system. That's their job, breaking the system. Write negative tests. You give them the positive way. They will try negative way to break it. Like one of them, I tell you, what if I leave it blank and I click OK and the system log me in? That system fails. That's the test case. Leave it, leave it blank. Click OK. What if I leave it blank and I click cancel and the system log me in? What if I put dot, 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 dot and I click the system in? That is the way you test. You test like you test like a mad person. That's how the QA team do. They don't think they don't think normal. They think abnormal. So they go different way because they want to make sure the system is secure. Nobody can go. So that is test case. And then now, when they test, what do they write their test case? You write before you test. Then now, when they release software, they do test execution. They test, and then from there, if there's any defect, they what they will do is they review the defect. They fix it, and when they test, when they test it, and everything is okay, they deploy it now to new environment. They move it to new environment. And let's look at this test in the life cycle. The same thing again. Requirement: they analyze it, they plan how to test the right test case, which I've just explained. You have to prepare your test environment. What type of test environment? Where are you testing? You need the the, the link. You need database connectivity. You need all of those things, and then now you execute. When you, when you test, you, you, you run the test and then you close it if everything is happening. You say happy days. And there are two ways of testing again. There are two terms, terminology I always say. They have a test driven development. So you write tests before you develop. People, a lot of people don't know. You write tests of something that doesn't exist. You say this thing doesn't exist. You test before you develop. And there's another one called behavioral. You test based on the behavior of the software. So I will not go into details of all of this because it's a lot of moving parts, you know, within testing. But what I will do is I will leave it there for Bra Oliver to talk about the integration and the, the security part and, and, and the rest of my, my, my team member will say a lot about testing, say just a lot. So Lynn, I just want to thank you for this opportunity and I hope I've, I've best explained what, is, what the QA team do. Thank you. Thank you, Collins. That was an excellent overview of testing. Everything in a nutshell. I'm sure you could actually study it for years to know everything, but you knew how to just give us the very, very basics. Awesome. So next we're gonna have Oliver. He's gonna talk about the importance of security testing. Come on down, Oliver. Hi, everybody. <clears throat> um, good day, good evening. I um, want to say, hey, Mari, I hope you're feeling good. And uh, I saw um, uh, my sister here, uh, Julie, hope you're also doing good. Chris Johnson, Ron, hope you're also feeling good. I want to say thank you. Um, Collins, you've done a wonderful job breaking it down for people to understand why we test, what is testing, why are we doing this? And I, I also want to add my voice to, to thank our tech guys in Hyderabad and the CEO for all what they were doing. So this is just, it's, it's not a pressure for anybody to, to learn it, but it's just to understand the business and to know what is going on behind the scene and why it's taking that long to come up with one product, to come up with one product. The, the process is, is massive. It's, it's a process that from one, it goes to the next and it goes to the next and it goes to the next. 
That's why some companies take, it takes them uh, more than three years to come out with one product. And it's not even the way we look at it now with, with OnPassive, you know, because there are a lot of moving parts, a lot of stuff going on to come out with one product, one, one. And the CEO told us that we have eight in the pipeline. Five is, is already done. One, he reviewed that. And two, about two next spring. So I want us to understand that now testing, security testing. And why do we do security testing? And what is security testing? But before we go, we move, we, we, we go into, that, into the details. Security testing is, we started from the beginning, from the starting point. From the starting point, the one that they want to start to do the testing, we start from the one and it moved through the whole process. Security has been testing the whole process. So what is security testing? It is a type of software testing that, that undercovers the vulnerability, threat, risk in a software application and prevent malicious attack from intruders. You know, then the purpose of the security testing is to identify all possible loopholes and weaknesses of the software system, which might result in a loss of information, revenue, input. So that is what the security testing is from the day one. That is, that is the definition. Then why do we do security testing? Why, 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 why do we do it? It's the main goal of security testing to identify the threat in the system and measure its potential vulnerability. So the threat can be encountered and the system does not stop functioning or cannot explode or cannot be exploded. Yes, we have the why, the why is important for security testing to prevent all the bad guys. And we should also remember that with security testing, the good news is that we have AI. That is the power that unpassive have before the other or, or the, the other um, companies that are out there, we, we cannot call their names. We are we are AI from scratch, from from foundation. We are AI from foundation. So that is the importance that we have. And it, with with security testing, the importance of security testing, because as AI is, is, is involved, we also automate. Now let me go to the type of security testing, the vulnerability scanning. We need to scan the, the, the face, other faces. We need to scan, we need to scan the system to make sure that the, that the, that the software, the system is against any vulnerability, that, that, that there should be no vulnerability. There, we cannot say 100%, but at least as Colin said, 95% should be risk-free. We have to scan and scan and scan to make sure that the vulnerability is as minimal. Then come now security scanning again. We do scan the network and the system and the system weaknesses, and later provide solution for reducing the risk. That is why we have to also scan again. Like I said, we have to scan the system after performing the security scanning. We have to scan again, and this go through all the phases in the process for this for the security scanning. Then come again the major one. We have penetration testing. Like I just mentioned, we have two types. We have the automated testing and we have the pen testing. We have, and, and we have the manual testing. Since we have AI, we can do the automated testing, but we have to do a one-time testing also. So this goes through all the processes. This goes through all the processes in the security, in, in, in the security testing. Because if we don't do it, if we want to go and do it at the end, it will cost a lot. The company will cost a lot, and you, the, the damages will, will be just too much for the for the company for the company to carry it on. So it's better each phase to the as we go along the process, we scan, check the boxes, check and check that this is done, this is correct, this is correct, this is correct. Then now on that sprint, we move to the next sprint. I always like to use that spring because uh, we we discussed about it last time, so that we should be, we should familiarize ourselves with with, with those terminology the two, two weeks and the four weeks sprint. So the, ne the next phase again in that process, we need to start again all over again with all the scanning, the vulnerability scanning, the penetration scanning, the ethical hacky scanning. My brother Bob will talk about the risk assessment and, this, and the security auditing. I'll leave that for him because it's part of compliance. But I want us to understand that when it comes to security, to security scanning, 
And with AI that we do have also in there, we have to scan, we have to make sure that the security there is tight. Yes, there's some security that we cannot eliminate that we call them residual risk. We cannot eliminate them 100%, but they are minimal risk. They are minimal risk, but they, are, they will be identified. They will be identified in all the process. Then after we've done all the security testing, now we'll come now to the other part to, to that, that we have to roll it out. We have to do another testing that that testing is same like the production testing that we have, is, we have to roll them out. And if there is any vulnerability or there's any risk or there's any threat, we have to go all over again. We have to go back and retest to make sure that the security is tight. Nobody can hack. But the good news is that we have one of the best or the best or the best of the systems or equipment and that, that prevent us. But and only with AI alone, we are, when it comes to security, we are 100%, let me not say 100 let me say 95%, perfect in that. I will leave it to my brother Vincent to take it over, Lynn. Um, the ball to you. Thank Lynn. you. Thank you very much. That was excellent, Oliver. Awesome. Thank you so much. Now we're going to have Vincent, and Vincent's going to talk about data migration. Okay. Oh, thank you, Auntie Lena. Thanks to all the well, uh, participants to be here uh, this uh, this night. I also thank my brother Collins for wonderful presentation, and also Oliver. Uh, I'll also start with the data migration. So I think uh, beginning of this week, uh, our CEO, Ash, told us about the data migration. So we'll migrate from AWS to our own data center. So I would like also to break it down, the process of migrating the data from uh, one location to another location. But to start, I also need to break it for, for people to understand where the first question will be, what is the data migration? So the data migration is a, a process to migrate from one system to another is known as a data migration. So why this uh, data migration? So people think it's also appear to be very simple, but there's a lot of change in the storage and also in the database application. So we have a different type of uh, data migration. The data migration, we can have a storage migration, we can have a database migration, we can have an application migration, cloud migration, business process migration, and then also the last point we did last week is a data center migration. So we're moving our data center. So where, what again, what is a data center? So data center is where businesses keep the critical application and data. So a data center also is a real world location. It's not a virtual one. So people, when we say data center, most people will come into their mind, they think about virtual. No, data center is a real world location. So our data center is located somewhere, it's not a virtual. So I refer to equipment and the other technology in the room. So in one way, data center is IT equipment and then also the IT technology in a one room. So this is what in one word, uh, a data center. So to start the migration of a data center, we need to, we go through different steps of the migration. So the first thing we need to go through, we go to uh, identify the data, data format, also the location and sensibility. So this is uh, before the start of the process. So this process, we migrating is a different format we need to change. Thinking about the format of the data, how we can make the data and then move the data smoothly as the way we want the data to be to be moved. What's the format we should put in in the post migration? So during the the, the planning, the planning process, we also have a potential risk. So we need to think about plan the risk and then that we can make sure that we can fix the risk. So that's also the security measure we need to think about that before a specific data move. So we, after that, we have to move to the planning, planning the size and the scope of the project. So we have to put us ahead, planning the size of the project, make sure that the kind of the project we are moving on, the, 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 the scope. So this is what the big, the resource we needed 
to move on to the next step. So this is a, the, the, the planning process. So this is the planning, how they we need to do that. So this need to be planned ahead. And then also we have to think about uh, the planning, the resources like putting in the weekend, out of hours in the evening. So this, all this need to be planned before we can move on. So to avoid also interrupting the business continuity. So this is how we need to plan in the business. And then once the plan of the business, we will, we will plan the business. We need we have to make sure that we communicate to the key stakeholders, the time frame, and then down the potential downtown because they also to know that this is what we try, we're planning to do, the downtown involved, everything. So the key stakeholders should be aware before we can move on. So the next step, when everything is planned very well, we think about the backup. So back up all the data. So what the backup is, is like keep, uh, have a copy of the data, everything we want to move on before we start the project. So the reason to have the backup is that we have the backup that, so if anything happens such as corrupt or incomplete or missing file, we will need the ability to correct the error by restoring the data to its original state. So this is how you need the backup. But nowadays also we have a cloud backup, which is the safest and also in secure also a backup method. So a lot of companies move to that area. So we have a cloud backup. So we can also use a cloud backup to, 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 do, our, to do our migration as well. So the sec other step we need to move on the staff, we need to assess the staff and also the migration too. So the staff we make sure that we know the staff or uh, uh, skill the staff have it to handle the migration and also uh, the, the tools, the system tools, the IT tools we're going to use for the migration. So all this need to plan our head so that when we come to the migration, everything is done in proper manner and they require when, how the migration should be on. So after the migration, they assess the staff in the migration tool, we can we'll move on to the execution of the data migration plan. So part of the execution of the data migration plan, we make sure that all the staff have the system permission applied to them. They make sure that uh, they can extract the target data to from the target data to the source data. So all this should be planned and then make sure that the transfer is move on ahead according to the, 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 the plan, the, the migration plan we, we put in place. So we make sure that my closely before, during also the migration, the execution of the project, we make sure that we monitor closely the data during the process so that we can identify and also resolve any problem that uh, arise. So this is also part of the uh, execution plan. And then the, we move into the final, uh, testing of the final system. So when the test is, the, the migration is done, so every single migration, we have a two results. It could fail, and then if the, the migration fail, we can use the rollback to get into the system where it used to be before. But if the migration passed successfully, once the migration is complete, we ensure that we test the connectivity problem with source and also target system. Also, the goal, uh, our goal here in the migration is the, to make sure that my, the data migrated is correct and secure, and also is the proper, is in a proper location where we want the data to be. So this is our goal here. And also to hand the testing, we need to, like my brother Collins uh, said earlier, once we finish, we move to the testing part. So the testing part is verify also the conduct the unit testing, your system testing, volume testing, web-based application testing, and also batch application testing. So all this need to be checked before we, once the project is completed, we, we move into the testing area where Collins is more specialized. And then we can think about the maintenance and then the migration plan. So the, the, the maintenance and the migration plan is also a, a time to audit everything we have done if anything uh, wrong or something, maybe during the migration plan, any application or system or file fail, we back to our uh, backup we put in place 
and then we can use that to restore what it didn't work during the uh, migration plan. So this is uh, uh, how we we conduct the 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 the, 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 the migration. So just to remember that before we start in the migration, we make sure that we back up all the data and then we, we jump the migration system. So not taking too much, I will hand here and then thank you uh, for following up this migration process. Thank you, Vincent, for talking about the data migration process. So we will have Bob Takusi now. He's gonna talk about compliance and security audit. Go ahead, Bob. All right, Antilene, thank you. Thank you so much. Good to see you. Hello, Baramadi. I hope you're feeling better. Uh, Uncle Ron, good to see you. Uh, Julie, I hope you're also feeling better. Um, my fellow brothers, and that was brilliantly presented by you three. Uh, Collins, of course, you know, <laughs> like the CEO said, you are a master of this art, of this part of the the industry. So well done. Um, <clears throat> uh, fellow Unpassivians, as you all know, um, Unpassiv, our dear company Unpassiv is, uh, is a multinational mega corporation that is coming, an IT company that is coming. Um, as we all know, we are in over 200 countries. And in these 200 countries, you know, these countries, they all have their different laws, different laws, rules and regulations that we have to comply with. We are going to be doing business with these countries. We're going to be providing our IT solutions. And we even have physical products to, this, to these countries. So they have their, their, their laws that we have to comply with. And as we, we, we do business with these countries, we collect payment, they pay us for our services, right? We do collect personal information, we collect, their inf we collect information, payment information and stuff like that. So our system must comply. So compliance is a, is a big deal as we are building our systems and as we are testing them to roll them out. We have to be cognizant of the fact that these systems must be compliant internationally. I found that Mr. Ash told us something about a year ago. He said that, um, <clears throat> I think we have two of the, the best, two of the, 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 the best law firms in the United States that are work, help, working with us, trying to help us make sure, two of the best law firms that are known for intellectual property, and compliance. I think one is in Washington DC and the other is in New York, if I'm not mistaken. And then I believe the best law firm in India is also working with us. And we have other associates around the world, We're in 200 countries, remember. So we have these lawyers all over the world working diligently to make sure on passive as we roll out this juggernaut, this, this massive internet quick that is coming, as we come along, we are compliant with every country. I think Mr. Ash also said something last week or the week before that we are, we are actually complying with these countries and those that we are not yet there, we are making sure the lawyers are pushing and pushing to make sure we comply. Compliance is, is a big deal, you know? When we talk of when 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 you, we 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 look out there, one of the issues that most companies face, most multinational corporations just like us face, is money laundry. You know, cybercrime, trafficking. These are some of the things that can actually affect a company, a company reputation and stuff like that. But we know that our founder, our, we, we are actually implementing anti-money laundry within our system as, as we move along. So as we are testing our system to make sure we, 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 we roll out, this is also part of the testing that we do. We have to make sure that the, this anti-money laundry uh, uh, has been implemented within our structure so that we can stop uh, uh, the bad guys from coming into our system and taking advantage of our system. And we know that with 
with the beauty of artificial intelligence, you know, they're going to have a very, very, very difficult time actually infiltrating and penetrating us because AI has that default uh, uh, detective capability that we've talked about several times where, you know, they will, they will easily de detect these bad guys and then they'll prevent and actually alert us so that we can take the necessary measures to make sure uh, this doesn't happen because it could really affect our reputation when we have a system where we have money laundry, it's, it's the common order of the day. People are doing criminal stuff, there's corruption and trafficking and things like that. That's not good. It, it, doesn't, it doesn't present a company well, publicly and globally, a, a big company like Unpassive. So <clears throat> there is also another, uh, as we collect um, payments, we're going to be collecting payments from all over the world. Credit card payment, people are going to be supplying our their, their personal information, credit card information and stuff like that. So there are other standards that we, as we build our systems, we comply with, with, with these standards so that we, we bring confidence, like most of some of my, my colleagues have said, they will bring confidence to the customers. We, we give them that digital trust that we talked about before. There's, there's a standard called P, uh, payment, card, payment Card Industry, PCI DSS, uh, Payment Card Industry Data Security Standard. It's a compliance, it's a, it's a, it's a standard that most companies abide by. The, uh, most um, banks and uh, some other financial institutions, merchants, those who do credit card processing, they got together and then they form a council, something called a PCI council, where they, they had certain regulation, certain security controls that have to be in place for your system to be in compliance to actually collect this kind of information, uh, personally identify uh, PI, personally identify information, we include your credit card, your name and social security number and things like that. So our system is being built. And as we are doing our testing, our security testing, cognizant to the fact that this system has to carry this kind of information, this kind of personal information, this kind of financial information, credit card information and, and the rest. Some, some other um, uh, standard that could also help us give this confidence is something that we call the SOC report, the Service Organization Control. It's a, it's a report or the ISO 27001 uh, 27, uh, certification. It just also gives, uh, gives the customers that come to us the confidence of the reliability and the, the security of our system, what we have at hand. So as we, we are testing, we are making sure that these security standards are met. So for instance, we could, we could even bring a third party in to check our compliance for us. One of the, uh, maybe some of the big four, we have um, PricewaterhouseCoopers, KPMG, um, Ernst & Young, and the and the like they they could come in these accounting firms they could come in and do an audit and then give us an, an attestation the, the soft report it's an attestation that they have actually checked our security controls and we are very very, very compliant and that gives our customer confidence as well you know so we test our system you know to make sure we meet this standard we meet uh, uh, these security control standards we also have HIPAA you remember on passive is going to be used in hospitals. O staff, I can see O staff being implemented in every hospital around the world, uh, doctors' offices and things like that. So HIPAA has some regulation. Remember, there's a, HIPAA has two sections. There's Title One and Title Two. Title Two talks about the security controls, the protection of personal health information, protected health information, and they, they have listed certain security controls that has to be within the systems to, 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 to be able to collect patient information and stuff like that. So we are building our system and we are testing as we test to make sure we are this compliant. We have the European uh, uh, GDPR, General Data Protection Regulation. In Europe, the personal data is very, 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 very looked seriously. Your email address is considered personal data. So, and they have certain, they have certain standards, certain security controls that you must have in place, even if, yeah, since your company does not reside in Europe, but if you are collecting personal data, people's personal information, there are certain security controls 
that must be in place. And there are fines. There are a lot of companies. I think Facebook, Mellon Bank, and some other companies have paid huge fines for, for not having or for violating this uh, uh, personal um, privacy laws in, 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 in Europe. We, in America, we have what they call CCPA, California Consumer Protection Act, you know, for privacy, you know, controls that must be in place for compliance. Latin America. So there are laws all around the world and Unpassive is being built around these controls. And when we test, we test to make sure this, this, this compliance are in place. They are also in place as we, as we forge ahead. Um, I also wanted to talk a little bit about security audit. Oliver talked about security audit. As we, as we, we develop each sprint, we, we do our testing and testing and testing, like Brother Connie said, but the security team comes behind. There's a special team also that actually does an audit of what they have done. So we, can, we, we come at the back and we do a, a risk assessment just to make sure, we do a, a security risk assessment to see, to make sure that they are doing exactly what they are supposed to do and what the changes that they are bringing into the system, for instance, each version of the code, is it in compliance? Is, is it complying with the security posture of the, the, the system as it was before? Because you can make a change, like Colin said, and then you come back, you mess something up. So does each version of the code maintains this application security after that code is implemented? So we do that, we do a risk assessment, systematic process to make sure that everything is in place as it was before the change was made. Another significant test, audit test that we do is the access control. Remember access is the key to everything. So those who actually have the access to this code, the code changes, is it restricted to only those who are approved to touch that code? So we test, we audit, we audit the, 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 the testing that has been done to make sure that Actually, it is only those who have the privilege or the right to change that code have that access, okay? And then Oliver also talked about penetration testing and vulnerability scanning. Yes, that is done. That dynamic static code analysis, and that is done consistently throughout the entire process. But now we come back and, it, we, and do an audit, a security audit to check, okay, when we run this vulnerability scan or the penetration testing and we find these issues, how do we rate them? Do we rate them medium, uh, low, medium, and high? Okay, if we do rate them, what is the turnaround time for the remediation? How, how, fast, do, how fast is it being fixed? Because you have to rate them, but when, when we run your penetration test or your vulnerability scan, you find issues, it has to be fixed and cleared for the next, um, for the next bill or the next uh, sprint, before the next sprint. So that is another, another key thing. And then also, remember, on passive is, is integrated. We, these systems are built separately, but they're integrated. So we also have to do a security audit test to check on the deployment code, how, how the integration code, is, how it is. Is it automated? We ask those kind of questions. What is the process around each deployment code? the integration aspect of it, because especially with, with us, we know that we are integrated, all the systems are talking together. So we do an audit to see, is it actually being integrated? Are they doing their, are they, is it being done the right way? And stuff like that. Then change management process. We also have to do an audit, we check the process that is in place for each change, the change control process, whether it is being tested properly, and the, the approval process that takes place before each code is finalized, it is built and then rolled out. There's a process in place. We audit it to make sure that process is being adhered to because you don't you want, and then just to, so that we make sure that we have the, the right code, the right version of the code is the code that is, is being deployed each time each code is being released. Um, you know, so, we know that our system is sophisticated, it is secured and, and it, it, it is built, you know, it's the latest technology that we have out there. So we are not really worried about, about that, but this is just informational for all of us, as my colleagues have said, so we should not worry too much. If you really don't understand or it's too technical for you, 
that is fine. So I will send it back to you, Auntie Lynn. Thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Right now, we're going to go to a question and answer. We're going to take uh, just maybe one or two at a time because uh, Ash Mufara is planning to attend and we won't want to have too many hands raised. So we're just gonna have questions for the panel, for our OTEC pros. When Mr. Ash Mufara does come, we would like you to respect the fact that it is not a question and answer time for him. It is his time to come in and just share freely with us. So we ask that you, if your hands are raised when he does come in, that you lower them or uh, we will lower you, your hand if we need to, but hopefully you'll just lower your hand on your own. Okay, so for right now, we're gonna take, let's say one question and we'll go one question at a time. And we're gonna begin first with Marty DeGarmo. Thank you. Go ahead, Marty. Oh, I gotta make you co-host, so sorry about that. There you go, Marty. There we go. My button wasn't working. Yeah, um, you know, I was looking at, I, I, before I came into Passive, I worked online for 15 years, as most of you know, and I've been through many, many launches and product debuts and all these things. And I can tell you that most of the launches, whether it was a website launch or whatever, for one thing, they were 1% the size of Passive. nothing near this size. Nine out of ten failed. They bounced around. Something there was something wrong. Either they couldn't handle the volume, and this all goes back to testing. This all goes back to double checking everything in the system to handle what's up. You cannot afford to have a bad start. You don't get a second chance of a debut. Here's our Cadillac, and you show them a Volkswagen. Sorry, you said it was a Cadillac. And everybody changes instantly. I'm telling you right now. We did a launch one time and they paid people wrong. The first second it launched. I don't need to tell you that 90% of the people quit in 24 hours. The company was over before it ever, ever started. I want to give you some examples that I had looked up when I found out what we were talking about tonight. <clears throat> Yahoo. Okay, for example, Yahoo Mail used to be number three in the world okay now it's number nine and do you know why they had a they had a switch of the board of directors or something like that a few people moved in and they said let's change the design now they didn't research it they didn't look and sometimes good is good okay don't change don't change something that's working and they dropped and it made a big impact on users because they were used to certain things in design they also had a couple of tweaks that they decided to change without doing the research without doing the testing that's one i don't know if everybody remembers you remember pokemon the pokemon go game dumbest thing i ever saw but it was a huge hit absolutely people went bonkers over it what happened though the website crashed it could not handle the volume now people say well it came back it never came back like it would have never ever people never do what they did originally they just don't it's a big impact they could not handle the amount of flow of people coming in it's sad but that's pretty you don't want that to happen and that's what when we say oh how much testing do you know? How, how do you need, you know, why do you have to keep double checking? When you, this is why. This is why. You want to, you don't get a second chance at these kind of things. You just don't. A few years back in 2016, Canadian immigration website portal, right? They had a bunch of people slam in. It knocked out the site, crashed it, repeatedly crashed it, causing people to use lose their respect in the Canadian immigration, it caused all kinds of problems. They got all, people got fired over it. People lost their job over it because why? They went in to sign up or they went in to find out and it was down for maintenance or whatever they wanted to call it. It really means we lost our behind and we're sorry and we hope we can get back. 
It's really, really that bad. And then back about uh, seven years ago, Kim Kardashian was doing a headline with this famous photo shoot. And anyway, it breaks the internet, right? They crashed. The Apple store had, I don't know, they released it, um, not emojis. They were going to make Kim emojis, all right? Something that stupid for $1.99. It crashed the Apple store. It crashed the Apple website. It caused all kinds of havoc. And people think, oh, wow, you know, and this is Apple, guys. This is Apple. They just had no idea what was coming. They, and that's why when you hear Ash, I'm going to be ready for a billion. So if we get, will we get a billion people using everything at one time? Probably not. But if he shoots for a billion, we're not going to crash at 10 million. Right? That's the point. And that's how important this is. When these guys bring up why they're doing what they do, why they're testing and testing. We hear that word testing and security and double test. Let me tell you what. Guys like Collins and Bill, Bob and Vincent and Oliver, a site like this crashes and they're working there. They won't be working there tomorrow. They don't care who they are. They won't be there tomorrow. In fact, probably the board of directors won't be there tomorrow. It's a lot of money. It's a lot of things going on. And people, you know how people are. They want now. They don't want to hear what your problems are. If you've got a problem, it's your problem, not theirs. Consumers don't care about that. They don't want to even want to hear that. So, I mean, you look at those kind of things, and I, and I remember here, oh, it's going to take a little longer. I don't give a crap how long it takes because the worst thing you could have is a bad first day. Trust me, a bad first day. Here's one that was one of the biggest of all time. The biggest shopping day of the year is Black Friday. Everybody knows that. You know who crashed on Black Friday? Macy's Department Store in 2015 or 2011, 12. You know how, what impact that had? I mean, you cannot imagine. People say, well, there's still Macy's. They'll make up. You'll, they'll never make up for that day. Never, ever. Yeah, they're going to make money and all that. That's okay. But people get in. The website crashes. They go somewhere else. They're not waiting. Why? It's Black Friday. It's not Black Saturday. They only have that day to get it done. Crash, guys. Macy's. So you got to think about what we're involved in when they say, oh, we got to get it right. Listen, you got to get it right. You got to get it right. It crashed because of a heavy, heavy load on a mobile app. 2016 is the time. Uh, they couldn't even complete their purchases. It dropped while they were making payments. It went, uh, went crazy. The whole internet went bonkers. 2010, the iPhone came out, right? iPhone 4. It's like a dinosaur compared to now. But it was a big deal then. All at the same time. However, the pre-ordering system for Apple Store itself to the new phone-based order uh, taker to AT&T website crashed the 1-800 number. Just ran into boom, would not work. So you got all these people cramming in, and it failed. And Listen, they're going to come back the next day. Some might, some might not. But in a, in, a, in a launch or a debut of a product, you cannot afford to have something like that happen. It's, there is no, oh, my bad. I made a mistake. I'm sorry. There's no such thing as that. You are damaged for, to, to bring back a reputation is very, very hard. Very hard. I think, let me see if I have any other one. Oh, you remember this, uh, health, healthcare.gov, when they launched, they called it Obamacare, but when the uh, healthcare app came out, remember the site crashed? Okay, here's people already nervous about the healthcare, and the website they're going to crash. They're in a panic. Wait a minute, you're going to run my healthcare, and you can't even run a website. Now they don't realize millions and millions of people. I think they said a million people in a millisecond. Like some crazy number for some of these apps. But anyway, I just wanted to bring around to what they were saying to you, so you get a bigger picture of what happened. You guys see a crash, but there's all kinds of hell breaking loose somewhere when that happens, trust me. And we don't want to see that. We can't afford to be part of that.
So if it takes a little longer, amen. Take your time, Mr. Mufara, because it'll be worth it for all of us later on, really. That's all I got. Yes, I feel better. Yeah. That's Very all. good, Marty. And one of the questions I was going to ask was, what happens if testing is not done properly? So you beat me to the punch. You must be a mind reader, Marty. Very good. Awesome. All right, we're going to take one question at a time because Mr. Ash Mafara will be coming. So we're just taking one at a time, one raised hand and Niraj is that one raised hand. So go ahead and unmute yourself and ask your question, Niraj. Good to see you here. Okay, uh, first of all, thank you for this amazing presentation. Before this presentation, I just knew only the part of on passive, but today I know uh, what actually happens behind. And it is very important for everybody to know because especially uh, 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 people understand uh, why it takes time. Okay, that was just in one liner about what was my understanding of this topic. My, my question uh, to Collins was he talked about agile, A-G-I-L-E. Sorry, I, I did not get that. And second question, I have a second question also. He talked about, and this is a very common sense question, uh, because uh, he talked about, we talked about 95% uh, 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 the QA testing uh, done. And as you know, that Ash is a perfectionist. So I just wanted, this is a very common sense question once again. What about the rest 5%? How do we ensure that it is 100%? So uh, <laughs> that was uh, my second question. Yeah. So, yeah, so I'll, I'll, let me answer the AGI first. You know, we are on passive is working in a, in, a, in, a, in a framework called Scrum. And Scrum is part of a bigger framework called the AGI. Because when you look at the AGI Scrum, within AGI, you have different framework. You have spiral, you have linear, you have extreme programming, depending on the framework each company will choose. But most major companies go by Scrum. What is Scrum? Scrum is about, last time we explained it, it's about working in a chaotic, it's just like a good chaotic environment with an eye on your goal, what you want to achieve. It's a rapid development environment. And that is why Mr. Ashford chose this environment. Because one of the things about Scrum is about transparency. There is transparency in it. There is no way you can hide. There is no hide and seek. You either do it or die. It's actually always use the word, we will do it or die. In that particular framework, you either do it or you are fired. And when we talk about 95%, we talk about the minimum you can have is 95% defect free. It means most of the major component, like the, the high, the customer facing component must be 100%. But that 5% is something that you don't know the unknown. And it is minimal, as Oliver said minimal things that you cannot, because as human being, you cannot give 100%. But in this particular environment, if you go less than 95, forget it, things will happen, things will go wrong. So there are just minimal things that you cannot see, but those things cannot really affect the application. It's just something, we, though it is 100% in our eyes, but if you want to say, say, you know what, one, as a QA analyst, I'll tell you, I'll give it 95%. When is 95%? I'll tell you, I've done every combination in this world. Whatever is in my brain, I've put it on that software. I've hammered it. I've done everything. And I said, you know what? We are good to go. Because remember, when Mr. Ash Bufara gave, when we wanted to move into All Founder, remember the launch of All Founder? I was sweating. I told Oliver, I said, the person who have given that authority who said go live is the QA person, the QA manager. Go, we are happy to go. That person on hot water. Because if Mr. Al Mufara clicked that button and it fails, that person is fired. That is the QA person who stand there and said, go. I was sweating, I was excited as a founder, but when I moved myself and put myself as a QA, I was sweating because we are the one giving go. Before you said go, you must be 95%. And this takes a lot of courage, sleepless night to ensure that that software is fit for purpose, that you can stand and tell your director, I am happy for you to click that button. So that's what I wanted to say. I hope you answer your question, Niraj. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. 
I wanted to add something, but it's fine. Go ahead and add, Oliver. Yeah, for that ninety for that ninety seven percent um, mirage, um, when you talk about an as an uh, IT security person, um, there are some risks that we identify, but it, it got no harm to the system. We can still clear them that it should go because it has we call it residual. Like I keep talking about residual risk. There are risks that they are not harmful, but they are there. They, they, they can't cause any harm into the system, but so it will not block that with the they will do no roll the system out. That 95%, at times even 99 point something or more than that 95%. But those risks, those threats that will, that, that will identify them, the good thing is that will identify those risks and they are not harmful. They are like low risk that they can't harm, they can't harm anything in the system. We have to, we can, we can live with them without doing anything. So those type of risks, we just, Keep, give away a pass that it should go because they will not do anything into the system or harm the system. I just want to add that on top of it as the security. Thank you. Thank you. Niraj, did that answer your question? You can speak. Yes, uh, definitely. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, and thank you for covering all these things. I am sure uh, everyone must have learned something new. So that's all. Thank you so much. So we're gonna take one more question. First hand up, get the question. Any questions from the 444, 443 people here? Any question pertaining to our topic of testing? Okay, we have Musharraf Hussein from India. You can go ahead and take the floor. Go ahead, Musharraf. Ciao. Hi everyone. Hello, welcome. Hi, so, and I just welcome. listening to uh, Neeraj also. It's a very uh, good topic discussion from there. And uh, uh, one thing I'm just asking that uh, some little bit of confusion because uh, we all are, uh, uh, those who are connected like an uh, online platform, there's an online uh, different uh, website. And we all uh, know that uh, uh, so many companies, I think as a 95% that I say, that's a fraud company. That's if I say that like 95%, those who are new company come to and uh, like a crypto basis or different platform and they will cheat it. Then after that, they will uh, start it some few month website, they will running and then after that will be closed. So in future, after uh, launching, is there any process, if uh, any type of uh, like, uh, uh, there's an option to we all uh, check that if any companies the those who are want to start it and after the investment the people they are investment from there and two three months gone then they will scam so how we will check to that is there any option is the one platform is our own passive to uh, track them and they will identify this other uh, company is uh, it's real uh, it's uh, identify it's uh, real because some more company we know that uh, they are uh, in India running to that company, but they will list it from a UK, Singapore. This because his IP address is the tracking like a certificate from showing from there. Okay, so this type of company because 95 percent that's fraud company those those who are scam from there. So how we will uh, check it out in the on passive because it's a very important because we all are. Uh, at least uh, most of people, they are connected to uh, online and they will earning from uh, somewhere. So how we will check, how we will guide because those who are not connected to our own passive, we will uh, uh, tell them, yeah, this, these are the way you can come to our platform and check it out. These are the fraud company, these are the scam company because these are the very important, uh, uh, I think uh, uh, it will be a very uh, serious thing, I think. Yeah, anyone, uh, Give this option uh, question from the chemistry. Any one of you that? can respond to that. Uh, let me just come before Madi said, you know, I don't know, Mr. Musharraf, um, we're talking about passive, right? We're talking about how passive will build his solution and how the solution go through the process of, of testing until we go to the market. We don't have, you know, most of the companies out there, we are not really, it is not our of tea, on pass you have the security, everything that is coming in. So if you are part of on passive, of course, on will check you. 
But to go out and police other company, I don't think Mr. Ashmore father would think like going out policing other companies. He's not the policeman, the world policeman. We are talking about here, we want to tell people, tell our founders about the reason. And maybe you misquote the 95%. When we talk about 95%, we're talking about 95% defect issues that we may find. You know, remember we're talking about wrinkles and wrinkles and wrinkles on on passing when we go. We're talking about our solution, like oatmeal, all the, the products you have in our back office, how they build it from scratch and ensure that this software is fit for consumption. So I think I think you really misquote that the ninety five percent is about defect free that we don't have any issue when we hit the market there will be no issues when it comes to our product it's not about policing others. Uh, Musharraf, does that answer your yeah, question? Yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, okay, yeah, thank you. I understand that thing, uh, uh -huh. but my question is not that. Okay, my question is there. Uh, we all are solution. We are total solution. All right, was that, are we moving on, Marty? I think so. All right, next we have Paul McFarland. And remember now, people, we don't want a bunch of hands being raised. Mr. McFarland will be coming in shortly. I, I was asking for one hand to be raised at a time. I see Marcian has her hand raised. Uh, you'll be next, Marcian, but nobody else to raise their hand after Marcian, okay? We'll play it by ear, person to person, all right? So next we have Paul McFarland to come in. You can unmute yourself now. Hi, thank you so much. You're welcome. Um, I know we our data center has um, has um, backup energy um, services, as Mr. Ash said. So if there's a local blackout, we won't be affected. But how how difficult um, for the computer experts? How difficult is it for a utility? the software test their system to determine at what level of increasing demand or decreasing demand in energy, they might have a blackout. Because we've seen in the past, uh, I mean, major places like the state of Texas had a huge blackout because they lost 15% um, of energy off their grid when the wind turbines um, are froze. Uh, Minnesota two years ago had a huge blackout in the middle of winter. So uh, can these utilities software test to determine at what level they might have a blackout? Who would like to take that? Let me take it then. Maybe um, Vincent, Collins, um, Collins, um, Vincent Collins or Bob can come in. Yes, um, that's why we do have multi-regional multi data center. If one, there's a blackout in one, the other one kicks in without any you you won't even understand, you won't even know that something has happened. So the multi-regions will not, one of them will kick in or they'll all kick in. Remember that we have a hybrid system. Our, our data center is hybrid from cloud to multi-region, then on-prem, on-prem which is in, that is in the, build, in the building. So, so when one system, you can bump it or what, or you can put it into flame, the, what the other multi-regions data center will just kick in since we are hybrid. So I think that answers your question. Oh. Well, yeah, I was really wanting to focus on, I mean, could we ask the utilities, not, not us, could we ask the utilities where we're located to test their system and determine at what level of increase in demand or deep, in other words, in the summer, there's more energy being used because there's more people turning on air conditioners. So when there's a lot of demand on the system, it's, it can stress it and they have a blackout. Um, okay. I think I can go, let okay. me, before Vincent come in, I understand what you're talking about utilities. Utilities mm -hmm. in, I think Mr. Ashmofra is thinking about the energy level, you know, because normally it is easy to build that the way you're talking about it, because again, there can be dashboard that can tell you the level of consumption you know, when there's utilities, there's something like that. And remember, we have generators as well. There is no data center. This is what I talk about. We have generators that control. So, for instance, if there is high demand, generator can kick in. But again, all the application or the assets that are within the data center can be controlled with the level of energy that is coming based on the level of, of the rate of consumption that are in. 
And if I believe it's actually hearing what you are saying, and if it's not done, it's something they can do. It is it's something they will do. But I understand what you are saying. But again, we have generators in place. All data center, most of the data centers have told us there's a generator that will kick in in case of, of, of energy sh shortage. And Oliver, I've already talked about multi-region and cloud that can help other locations if you really understand all of this. Yeah, I understand that we are backup, so we won't be affected, which is, you know, yeah. which is great, okay. great system. All right. Did we answer your question then, Paul? Well, I, I mean, I, I, I still would, I mean, I'm just thinking that the, the utility should know at what level they might have a blackout and let us know what that level is. Yeah, yeah we have, a, we have in place a monitoring system. So monitoring system can monitor everything in the system. So I can be sitting here in UK, have a monitoring system and then control everything going on in our data center. And also one thing you forgot is that with uh, today artificial intelligence system, artificial intelligence system will do the thing the girl for us. Because nowadays, before we can go, uh, you see the customer service people, they go company to company to tell people what to do, to do this, that. But today with artificial intelligence, I don't need to move from my desk here in the UK. I can know exactly in one specific region in the United States, this is what customer need. With artificial intelligence, we can search for customer need and then send it to the company and then company can analyze the system and then put it down. So this is artificial intelligence we are using in, on a passive. So the, we don't use the manual stuff like nowadays we used to use, but today is everything have changed and then things are moving on. So with artificial intelligence, what you are asking, artificial intelligence can break in two minutes for us. It's not a big deal for uh, on passive to resolve this kind of issues. And then like my brother Collins and Oliver said, so with the help of the artificial intelligence, we are on the top of the game. Thank you, Paul. Thank you for your Thank question. You. Appreciate it. Next, we move Thanks. on to Marcien Hemabu. You can unmute now, Marcy. Marcien. Thank you. Good to see you. Thank you, Lynn. Uh, my question is uh, about the security. And uh, I know that we are going to go live with Omer. So I just want to know with all this, I know our security is very, very good, but the, are we going to still be able to have the spam mail with Omer? Because uh, I don't know, because with all that company, we have too much spam. So with Omer, with our security, are we going to still have those kind of things? Thank you. Thank you for your question. Uh, Want to take that? Yeah, Omar. Yeah. See, I think the answer is no. Um, you see the, the 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 version that we have now in the back office. You don't see the spam folder, so that that is what we we're going to. And then AI is going to filter as the emails are coming in. Is filtering it already. So the mails that are coming to your mailbox are the mails that should come into your mailbox. You will not get any spam emails with Omail because AI. I is there that flashlight over it just inspecting making sure you are not being spammed so the answer thank is no yeah yeah thank you so now is anybody can when we go live for somebody to have omel did they have to be a founder or they can just have an omel like we do with other mail no when omel is ready to be deployed to the to the world you're going to go to like, you know how you go to yahoo.com? Yahoo you're going to go to omail.ai and then you create an account. Oh, okay, thank you. But now we have, we can access it from our back office because we are founders. Oh, so great. you'll be able to access it that way and also through the back office. And because we are doing the beta testing, the beta so, testing. We, so we have the access now as founders. That's, that's the privilege that we privilege. have, mm -hmm. that we have now as founders that we see it before it go out. There and Omail is spam free. Spam free. Like, like my brother Bob said, Omail is spam free. We, we, that, 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 that is what those are one of the features in, in Omail that is we are leading already. We are leading before we even, before we even roll it out. Marcian, it's just like now if you have Gmail, if somebody writes you from Yahoo, you, you, you get their mail, you know it's from Yahoo, 
The difference will be when you write somebody from AI, they might be tempted to go, whoa, what's that, right? And there'll be a way for them to find out what that is. Then when they put their name and email in, they can have an AI account, just like you do with Gmail, Yahoo, or anything else. And a lot of that will happen because of that. Plus, uh, the AI account will be the best in the world. It will have offer things that no other email has. Ash already said that. He was blown away of what they what they wound up with. And of course, he keeps adding to it. But it's it's going to be a lot of fun. And you'll be surprised how many people come into Unpassive just because of the email service. I'll tell you that right now. Just because of that. And it's because of spam. Remember, spam in in Yahoo or Gmail or whatever, as much as they say they don't like it, the money flowing around is partially from spam. Let's face the facts. But unless you invite somebody into on passive, they can't spam you. Right? There is no, they, they can't. In fact, if they get caught doing it because we own our environment, data center, they could be tracked down and kicked out. It's not like Yahoo or, or Gmail. You're going to have a big, you're going to have a hard time doing the wrong thing in an passive universe. Let's put it that way, because they will be tracked down and taken care of. Just to add to what Maddie said and our brother have said, if you look at Omail, the interface is just crazy. I don't know how many founders have just taken a look. Yesterday we were doing it with Lee and my brothers here. We look at the interface. Honestly, there is no match when you want to compare Outlook, uh, Yahoo Mail, Gmail. Forget it. With what we have in our back office now, we put it in the market. It will beat all of them because the interface. You know, if you look at, especially for business people, those who want to come in and do their job, read their mails, navigate from one screen to the other. You know, if you go to Gmail, it's just sorry to say it. How many of us can know where the calendar is? Some people don't know where calendar is. Some people don't even know where a lot of things are. Oh yeah, Google Sheet, Google oh, Sheet, how to get, to, yeah, you can't see it. But remember yeah. this, it's just like when, when I first started, I started on AOL. Do you remember when AOL came out? It was a phone and you could hear ding dong, boom, bang, burr, whatever, and you would get AOL. Why did I move to Yahoo? Because it was better, it had different functions. Why did I move from Yahoo to Gmail? Because it was better and had more functions. The same thing's gonna happen to dot .ai. It's just going to happen. They're going to migrate to something that's better. And when they hear it's more secure, you're not getting spam. That's a big selling point for people. Why? You just brought it up just now. You don't like it. A lot of people don't like it. So it, it's, a, it's a big deal, a big deal. And, and like Colin said, to this day, and I use everything in Gmail, the most people don't know all the stuff it has. They, they do. It's not really user friendly. You have to click little dots and move around and, you know, like Google Sheets and all that. They have Google Sheets. It's fantastic. 90% of the people don't know what it has. They just don't know. And and I believe, I, I'm sure that on passing will be totally different. Be very user friendly. Sim simplicity at its best. So if that helps. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you, Marcienne. Okay, we're gonna take one question and one question only. Who wants to raise their hand? You get to ask the next question. Ah, oh, you're fast on the draw, Curie Young, go ahead. Hello, everyone. Hello. Can you hear me? Good. Yes, I just we hear you to well. Make a Thank you. I just wanted to make a comment, not a question. And my comment is to Mr. Paul. Um, I understand his question quite clearly. However, he must remember that um, utility companies have something which they call sensitive system information. So if a nefarious person would be able to get the information such as how many, how much wattage it has to, to shut it down, then um, the nefarious people can try to hack the system to bring a power surge. So a lot of that information will not be disclosed to um, different companies at all because it can be leaked. Also, to think about 
a ring. So when you have multi-factors, um, data centers around the world, if it, it goes clockwise and if it stops and it what it does is it, then it goes counterclockwise until the other ring comes up. So that's what I wanted to say. I work in a, um, in a networking operating system. Um, I'm a manager, so I really understand that. And also usually not, well, data centers have a set temperature between 60 and 65, and it's always cold in there. So the router switches and data and everything stays at a certain temperature, so it won't overload to level out the, um, the usage. So that's what I wanted to say. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Next, we have Violet Ryan from Canada. Go ahead and unmute yourself, Violet. Um, hi. Hi. Can you, um, yes. Is there any possibility when Ash comes on, I could uh, come on and, and gush over him? You can gush <laughs> all you want, but you're going to be muted. <laughs> no, and no. Not gonna I mean, be that's what I'm asking. If you could unmute me and I can gush when he's uh, no. almost done. No, no, <laughs> we're, no, we're going to keep it. Uh, yeah, good try, though. And, and at least you asked. That was very polite of you. Thank you, uh, Violet. I have so tried <laughs> to put my hand up. I've tried to to unmute and it's never worked. Oh, so bless your heart, I, Violet. Yeah, I better well, ask. <laughs> yes, for sure. We love you for that. Well, we want to make sure that Ash Mafara feels very comfortable in coming to webinars, knowing that he's not going to be blasted with 10 or 20 hands. You know how we all get so no, excited just, when we see just him. Just me myself. So, just me myself. Yeah, so we make an exception for you. We make an exception for all 468 people who are here, Violet, because we have to I'm be fair. All right? So we love you for asking that question, and we, we uh, appreciate you for understanding the boundaries of this webinar to make yes, sure that Mr. Mofaro will come back again and again, and he'll bless okay. us with his presence and with his information. Thank you for asking, you. though. We You're love welcome. you. Thank you, Violet. Bye. Thank you. Bye. All righty. Next hand. Anybody want to ask a question? No, no hands. Okay, I have some prepared questions for everyone then. All right. My first question is. There you go. Then we have one. Is, oh, we have a question. Okay, Hildegard, go ahead. You can unmute yourself. Yeah, thank you. Good evening, everybody. And thank you for all of you who make these Friday nights happen. I'm very glad that I can join and learn from you all. I have a question regarding the O-Mail because in some of the uh, O-Founders accounts, the O-Mail doesn't work. In others, it doesn't, does work. Does that necessitate me to reach out to somebody in support or is this part of the test? Just if somebody could kindly respond to that, I'd appreciate it. Thank you so much, everybody. You're welcome, Hildegard. Who wants to take that? Anybody want to take again, that? What was said again, Len? Yeah, why I didn't, it get, I didn't get the question. Hildegard, go ahead and repeat, please. Can you say it really simply, like in one or two sentences? Just ask your question very pointedly, please. Somebody yes. who has yes. had multiple positions, for lack of a better word, I know we don't want to call it positions, multiple accounts. And in some accounts, it's the email is working, worked from day one. In others, it is not working. What is a person to do there? Sit tight, call support. What do you suggest? Uh, sit tight. It, it will be working for everybody. In fact, as the weeks roll on, it's going to be expanded more and more and more. Fantastic. Fact, Thank you. Within, I within, so. within, a, within a couple of weeks. Awesome. Thank you, everybody. I appreciate you. Okay. Thanks. Thank you for asking your question. Now we move on to Ini, Edu, Kerry. Don't forget to add your country. Everybody here, before we move on, we wanna show Ash Mofara that we are complying with the rules. So I see there are some panelists here that still don't have your full name and your country. So please go ahead and adjust that. 
so we can be proud that we're following the rules, right? So next we have Ini Edu Kere. Go ahead and unmute yourself, Ini. Good morning all, good evening all. Good evening. Am I, I have a question I want to ask, please. Might be sure. that might have been shared before. I have not been hearing us talking about search engine optimization for over time now. Does it mean that when we go live, we will still be using Google? Who wants to take that? When we go live, will we still be using Google? All well, people can use Google anytime they want. It's a search engine. It has nothing to do with unpassing. It's a search engine. I'm going to use Google when it launches. I'm going to use Google a year from now. It's, it's, a, it's just a, it's a search engine. It has nothing to do with unpassing. Ini, is that clear enough for you? Um, not really. What I'm, what I think, of what the I am, I was expecting because when we came in, we I remember Charles used to mention that uh, we have our own search engine optimization. Uh, in fact, it was the one that made me to understand that search engine optimization is uh, something like uh, the Google we are using no, no, these no, days. No. As search, a very, uh, <laughs> search engine optimization is how well you rank on a search engine and Google is a search engine. So it, it's just the ranking, how well you rank on a search engine. There's many of them, but we have no competition with Google, zero. There will be no competition against uh, Google. In fact, they do pretty well by themselves. They're, they're just a encyclopedia online. You can look up anything, it's, 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 there's no comparison. What we're going to do is rank higher in Google. That's search engine optimization. They find out keywords and what to use on your site that helps you rank higher. Example, when you go to YouTube, when you go to Google and you look up recliner, there might be 50,000 pages with recliners on them. Nobody goes to page two. So everybody's fighting to get ranked on page one. If you could get ranked on page one, like the top three or four, you're going to do very, very well. And I'm passive because of the amount of content they have. They're going to be ranked high all over the world. They're going to be ranked high in YouTube, on Facebook, on Google, on Bing. If you name any of them, we're going to be ranked high. That's optimization. You're getting ranked high because of keywords, long tail keywords. And that's how it's ranked. There's a lot of a couple of other things being put in, but the tech team in and our company is very good at ranking. We're going to do very, very well. Trust me. But it's two different Thank things. We, we have no competition with Google. Thank you, Ini. He did explain the difference between search engines and search engine optimization. Completely two different things. Thank you for your question. Thank you. Now we go on to, okay, we see Latoya and Lisa. No more hands, just, just Latoya and Lisa. We're doing good, everybody, keeping only two active hands up at a time. So now we go on to Latoya, Belgrave, Francis. Go ahead and unmute yourself and ask your question. Hi, good afternoon and good evening, everyone. Um, so I was on a webinar, I want to say either uh, Saturday or Sunday, it was a global webinar. And um, the question I had at the time, I was referred to talk to this group instead. Um, I just joined on Passive as a founder in March of 2022. So I wasn't there at the time when um, the, everything started before pre-launch. And I'm a, I, I'm a social worker by trade, I'm, I'm a therapist. But I also have a, a, a lot of interest in tech and um, science, facts, science fiction. And I heard the, techie guy, the tech guys a couple of weeks ago talking about the Agile Scrum. And I was like, wow, wouldn't I, as a founder, love to be part of the, the, um, the invention process, the testing process, um, just getting better information about 
what we're doing, just for strictly curiosity, really. Um, you know, um, Mr. Morlock was on that call and I had asked him that question. And he says, well, you know, you can't just go to Hyderabad, you can't just go to, you know, to Dubai. And I'm like, well, why not? I'm a founder. Can I just knock on the door and say, hey, can I come in? Um, I was thinking that that was my plan for sure, but he said not to do that. He said to talk with, with you here, Lynn, today and to talk with the techie guys and maybe I could get some information offline, but I would really, really, really like to be involved in any way. So thank you. Thank you. Next we have Lisa, oh, go ahead. Go for it, Ron. All right, give you a little break here. Lisa yeah. McBride, Canada, Before, go ahead. One, one last thing, Ron, I wanna just yeah. say that uh, in order for you to come to the panel at this point, we're asking that you have your first name, your last name and your country, because there's too many people in the panel that do not have that. So at this point, if you're an attendee and you're raising your hands, make sure that you have your first name, last name and country indicated and then we will bring you to the panel. Thank you. All right. That being said, Lisa McBride, come on down. Hello, Lisa. You need to uh, uh, click the button to unmute them. I asked you to unmute. Oh. Okay, I'm unmuted now. I was trying. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, how is everybody? I hope everybody's doing well. Fine. Um, my question is, I I had asked this in a previous one, but it was the wrong time to ask. Is um the platforms that we have now, like Facebook or TikTok or whatever other social media platform, are they going to be interactive with on passive? Like, can we share from the ones that are are available now to on passive, like you do to like you know, Instagram to Facebook, we share things between them. Does anybody what do you know? Marty? Yes, like you would be able to do a video, let's say on O Connect and share it on Facebook. Okay, that's what I was wondering. And, and, um, and be able to draw people maybe towards uh, on pass, just a thought. Well, but, yes, that's why I was wondering if they were going to be connected. I mean, I, how they're going to do it, I don't know. But like right now, you, there's many, uh, you could do a, you could do a Zoom on the YouTube, I mean, Facebook, you can do uh, a live on Facebook to Zoom. I mean, there's a lot of stuff you can do now, interactive, you just got to okay it and say, it. you know, you got to uh, set up to where you give it permission. Uh, how much will how much access we'll have? I don't know exactly, but I believe we'll be able to broadcast to YouTube and Facebook. Okay, that's what I was wondering. Thank you. All righty, Mr. Neeraj, come on back. Oh, I gotta do that thing here. Let me find it. Uh, Okay, uh, sorry, I have questions again because right. my mic. <laughs> okay, you know, by you, get old, you, you get old, you can't remember everything at once. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so the first question is to Oliver. I have three questions actually. I'm asking since I'm given opportunity, simple questions, but uh, uh, asking those questions, I think it would be great for the audience also. My first question uh, is to Oliver. Uh, he said about two weeks and four weeks sprint. Uh, you may have covered it in earlier sessions, but I just wanted to understand in the technical world, uh, when you call sprint, is it does it mean two weeks? It, like, is it a definition two weeks or four weeks or, or, or uh, there is no certain sprint as such? So that is my first question. Second question is uh, to Vincent. Uh, Vincent, uh, about the data migration, we are talking about uh, like in on passive uh, data migration specifically. Uh, we were talking about uh, transferring the data from AWS to uh, some uh, 
regional uh, i think something which i uh, which went over uh, uh, i think majority of uh, which which may have been a bouncer for majority of them so uh, if you could explain that particular part what uh, what are we transferring from aws to uh, that thing and a uh, third thing is about uh, testing uh, uh, we are employing hackers now in hackers i suppose there are two types of hackers one is who will damage the system and another one would be an ethical hacker so if someone can explain uh, uh, what job does an ethical hacker do thank you very much let me go and then i think brown river will come in just want to i'll take the ethical uh, hackers yeah okay so um I know Brown never talked about Sprint, and last time we explained what Sprint means. You know, in, in Scrum framework, you have the minimum you can have is two weeks, and the maximum is four weeks. You cannot go below or above that, then it's not Scrum. So if you follow in the Scrum process, it's just two. Awesome, so the life cycle, the way they develop software, some company will go two weeks. So for instance, you can say in OML or whatever component you want to build or features you want to build, you can determine and define it and say, will, are we going to go by two weeks sprint or are we going to go by four weeks? So it just depends on the company, but you cannot go below or above. It's just between two to four weeks. So it's just, a, you must deliver between that time frame. You depending on the company and how they want to do it. And when you talk about ethical hackers, all of them, they are just testers. So testers are hackers. So I think Brabo will add that. So testers, they hack because all what they do, they hack the system. They test to ensure that, to verify that the system is fit or is doing what it ought to do. And by doing that, you have to hack the system. You have to test, you have to go, you have to write positive and negative tests. So the negative test is about hacking. The positive is about going by the, the functions, what they have said the system will do. For instance, if you tell me, the only way you can open a door is to open it right, you know? And if I open it left, it means the door is not working as it should. I'll open it right, I'll open it left, I'll take it up and bring it down. So I don't go by your way, I go by your way, yes, it's good, I come back. And if the door open, vice versa, I say, no, this door is not good. And I can push it up and try to see if the door will open. So I'm just trying to break the door. That's the hacking of the system. So you try every combination, every set of combinations to ensure that this door is doing and there is no way someone can break it. Exactly. Neeraj, that also means if a, if a good guy can get in, a bad guy can get in. So they test all the windows, all the locks, everywhere possible to break into the house of unpassive. If they can do it, they report it and say, look, you've got a weak spot right here. If I can do it, so can the bad guy. So that's why they make it bulletproof. You know, banks have people that do that kind of hacking too, where can you get into the system? And they go, let me try. And they hire people to try to break in. They go, yeah, I got in. What did you do? This, 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 and this. They go, oh my God. So then they work on that so that you can't. There's the good guy and the bad guy. You got to have the, the good guy because he understands what yeah. the bad guy's doing. That's the easiest way I can explain it. But that, it, it, that's all. It's just yeah. uh, double security, triple security. Yeah, I can just add one more thing. Um, Collins had it right, so I don't have much to add, but I believe um, we, also, we also call it penetration, uh, near as penetration testing, right? So, and I think... Um, Mr. Ash has said that we have a, 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 a special team that does the penetration testing. And most companies like, like ours, they will actually hire an outside company that specializes in penetration testing. They will come and they'll beat down the system, figure out all kinds of ways to hack and break the system. And then they write a report and then they give to us and then we fix what they find. So it's also known as white hat, white hat hacking or testing. So it's just um, very, very, very good for the company because we figure out, we find every problem that might be out there. The good guys find it for us. We, 
we know what it is, we fix it before the bad guys get to it. Okay, Niraj, for the data center question you asked uh, about AW. Okay, first of all, our data, uh, our data was hosted by your AWS. So that means uh, on passive, everything was hosted by AWS. And then since this week, I think beginning of the week, we transfer in what we used to have in AWS to our own data center because our CEO said we have a new data center and then all the information we used to be in AWS is now transferring to our own data center. So our all our data is in our own data center. So we're not using AWS anymore. So this is what I said about earlier in the data migration system. I hope right. you answer your question. Uh, no, actually, uh, from he said that from AWS, it is going to be transferred to somewhere, and then from there, it is going to go to the data center. So I wanted to understand the middle person. He talked about regional something. Uh, so I just wanted to understand that particular part. Uh, when oh, yeah, for, for the, for the mid, middle uh, person, I have, I'm not aware of the middle person where the data center will be transferred from AWS. So it could be maybe in the cloud to yeah. the That's it what could be in the yeah, cloud. from the yeah. cloud to the cloud. From the cloud to the regional. Uh, yeah, because most of the, when we do a, nowadays, when we do the migration, we need to back up all the system before we do. But now a lot of company, they prefer to back up all the system to the cloud. So when they finish and then they can get, if anything, they need to restore the backup or anything, they use it from the cloud to do that because it's much much more easier for other, uh, anywhere in the world you are, once your application on your data is in the cloud, it's easy to back up. But to my knowledge, I believe it could be in the cloud. So put in the cloud and then we can transfer to any data center in the world. Yeah, I think in chat it was men mentioned a multi-regional uh, something. So yeah, he was talking about something multi-regional, and yeah, it's I, multi I multi regional Niraj. It's multi regional. So what, 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 what is that? So what is multi-regional? Okay, uh, multi-region is uh, when we have a, a data center. Data center is located everywhere in the world. We can have a data center in. Uh, we US, we have a data center in uh, Asia, maybe in India, data center in Europe. So when we work like, uh, I work with uh, Microsoft. So Microsoft, we have a multi-region data center. The data center is everywhere. Your localization is everywhere in the world. So where you are, if you are in India, you want to connect to the data center, you will connect to the data center close to your area. Maybe the one in India, you will not going jump the one in India and go to the Europe you will go close to the one, close to your region. That's how the multi-region works. So the, the is everywhere, every location in the world, we have a data center. So when you connect and people connecting to the one is close to their region, that's the multi-region data center. Thank you very much, Vincent. You're welcome. Okay, that good, Niraj? All right, buddy. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, no, uh, I'm not going to try this name, but Mr. M. Derrick from Cameroon. <laughs> Come on down. Unmute yourself. There you go. Okay. Greetings from Africa. How to do the you entire pronounce your team. first name? Ma Mu Ba. Okay. I want to mess that up. So go ahead, Derek. <laughs> Ma, Ma Mu Ba, Derek Foche. Okay. <laughs> Greetings uh, once more from Africa, Cameroon. And thanks to the entire team for the great work that uh, they are doing. My question goes to O Wallet. We have a difficulty here in Africa for those who are doing online business. To have a plugin for payment is very difficult. To have one that is valid for our zone, our region, it frustrates a lot of uh, people who are into online business. And I wanted to know if uh, with O Wallet, will it just be for our payment? in our back office, or it can be used for, to receive payment from uh, online businesses and all the life from our zone, because a lot of uh, plugins this way, we are prohibited, like PayPal is restricted for us this way to use for online deals. 
I don't know if there is any such with the O wallet or it is limited just to our payments from the sales of our, our, of our products on passive. That's all about my question. Thank you. All righty. Who wants to take that? Madi. <laughs> that's, that's a Marty question. <laughs> Marty <laughs> once, Marty yeah. twice, <laughs> Marty three times. Uh, we do not know all the details of the functions of O Wallet. So for me to try to tell you, I would be wrong, and anybody else try to tell you, they would be wrong. So we don't know all the functions. We will find out very soon. And we'll all know exactly what it will and will not do. But right now, I do not know, and I don't know anybody that knows 100% everything about O Wallet. I'm sorry, I wish I did, but I don't want to pretend to know. I do not know. Okay, thank you very much. Right. I don't know if uh, such a question could be carried forward to maybe Ash or whoever can. Uh, because it will be a good, it will be a plus, it will be a fresh market for, for Africa. Well, I, I, I just want to tell you that he knows all the countries, how they pay, what they can accept and what they can't. Trust me, he knows that. So uh, whatever's in the work, he'll know. And when it comes out, he'll tell us. Uh, it's not a question that he would need to know because he, he knows the questions. He, he gets them by the thousands daily from every country. So I'm sure he knows. And you will we'll all get the answer of what's going on. You've got Papua New Guinea. You've got Africa. You've got different small countries all over the world. Hundreds of different, thousands of different types of currency. Uh, we will find out when we, when, when we need to know. Right now, uh, they're working on merchants and all that right this minute. So we'll find out when we need to know. He's going to, if it's possible, everybody will be, have access, no problem. He, he realizes it's global and he's got many, many people from Africa, no doubt. Thank you very much, Marty. I'm grateful. Bye-bye. Thank you very much. Could I interject question? one quick interjection, if I would, uh, if you would let me, uh, Ron. I'm Absolutely. trying to get, I'm trying to con uh, contact Kire Young from the United States. She just spoke with us and I wondered if you could just look at the message in the chat we'd like to communicate with you and contact you if possible thank you kiri all righty any more questions one more question going once on twice hey <laughs> should be an option there no one has any more questions i know who has a quest oh richard lemoth in ontario canada go ahead a month Okay, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Unmute yourself there, young man. I love all you beautiful men and women from the bottom of my heart. Hey, my question is going to stun a lot of people. My question is about Ash Mufara. Now, from what I've seen from the beginning, from 2018, He's got one great big heart full of love for humanity. He's a handsome young man. He has a family that's been very, very patient with him. And he's almost killing himself for us because I can see it in his eyes that he's tired, but he just keeps on giving and giving and giving. And I'm sure that he gets in a lot of trouble with the people that are organizing with him because he always wants to give us more and more and more and more. As he said, he's a perfectionist like his father. That's another gift because he will not give us anything unless it's perfectly done. So does any one of you have anything else to answer my question about Ash Mufara? 
Do you know of any other gifts that he has besides what I said? Somebody gonna answer? <laughs> Marty. Got a pretty good sense of humor. Well, he likes to tease us a lot, but that's okay. I don't know, you named some pretty high ones already, Rich. It's pretty hard to top that bar that you just put out there. I know he's an amazing human being, no doubt about uh, it. You know, I I I've been I've been sitting here for almost four years. Listening and listening and listening. Okay, there's a lot of techie, techie stuff. I'm learning. I mean, I'm from the 1940s and 50s. So, but, you know, this man is giving everything to us. I mean, he, he's just amazing. I, I, I cry with joy all the time. Every time that I hear him speak to us, I cry with joy. He's an amazing man. I wish I had 1% of his brain, but I love all of you and big kiss, big hug to all of you. And if anybody has anything else to say about Ash, go right ahead. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Richard. All right. Let's go to uh, Namaya Dash. Is that right? Unmute yourself, India. Oh, you're muted. There you go. Go ahead. Hello, everyone. Can I ask in uh, Hindi as uh, my this is uh, not so good? Can, but nobody's going to be able to answer you except for Niraj. Niraj, you there? Let me, let me see him. I knew him if he's here. Yeah, I think Niraj is here. Give me, give me a second. I'll find him. There he is. What, uh, sir? What is the alternate of Google in uh, on the ship? As we know, our data center is live. Can we? Uh, uh, go on a passive without uh, Google or what without is Google, the can you go on, on passive? passive? Are you asking if you can go on on passive if you don't have Google? Uh, oh, sorry, uh, I didn't hear this question. Uh, uh, say repeat for Sakteo, sir. Just again, Google say he hum on a passive man, just a thing. So, is there tool software on the passive that Google can be on the passive that we can be on the passive that we can be on the passive that we on the passive that we can be 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 on the passive that we can Sir, आप कोई भी ब्राउज़र ओपन करके वहाँ पे onpassive.com डाल सकते हो और आपका onpassive ओपन हो जाएगा या ofounders.net आपको गूगल में जाना ज़रूरी नहीं है। Yes sir, so what uh, onpassive का कोई ऐसा सार चीज़ है गूगल का जैसा? सार चीज़ नहीं है अभी तक। Yes sir, thank you. Okay, uh, so just just for knowledge of uh, all, uh, he has he asked a question uh, whether uh, whether to go to on passive. Uh, why, uh, why do we always use Google to go to on passive? So I answered him uh, since this was a very basic question. I answered him uh, that uh, you can go directly to ofounders.net or onpassive.com and uh, in the browser and directly open that. And the, his next question was that, uh, do we have any kind of search engine like Google uh, in the on passive ecosystem? I told him no as of now. So if anybody wants to add uh, something, yes, you're open. Thanks, Dan Raj, you're the man. Thank you, thank you, thank you for helping. I had most of what he said. Okay, 
Anybody else want to raise their hand while we're waiting on the man? I know somebody who has a question. Her name is Lynn Nakamoto. Yes, I do. Okay, my question is, if there are time constraints, is it possible to skip some of this testing process? Is that feasible or practical? Any of the OTEC pros can answer that, please. Collins, you want to take that? Yeah, so there is no way you can skip any process in, te in testing. So the longer the development, they have to expand the time, extend the time of testing. So the process is the process. There is no way you can skip any of them. The moment you skip one of the process, just ready to, 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 to have a lot of issues because there is just no way. Thank you very much. Hopefully that's clear to everyone. So I want to know, my next question is, why do we have to test before migration of the data and after? Why do we do that? Anybody can take that. We, we do the testing of, uh, we, do the, we do the testing before and after the, uh, the migration, why are we doing that? Because the, first of all, we do, we do the testing to make sure that we know exactly what we're going to do, the system we are handling it. And then once we finish the testing, we make another test to make sure that we check all the connectivities from the source and the testing and the target uh, migration. And also we make sure that every system like database application or the data involved, they are all working okay as expecting to be so this is the why the reason why we do the testing so that we make sure that everything is working and everything is fine before we can sign that the testing everything's done and then the testing has been done properly so this is the main reason why we do the testing i think Collins, if you have something to add uh, so they, they always call it post pre-migration and post-migration testing so pre is about ensuring that everything is working okay before you migrate and then post migration is about ensuring again that what you have migrated is still the same and nothing yeah so there's no failure and then my secondary question to that is if the migration process doesn't go well what can be done If the migration process doesn't go well, most of the time we roll back to the system. So we roll back. So we put in the we roll back what we have tried to migrate. So the rollback is like taking back to the system where it used to be before we start the migration. So we do a rollback. Thank you. And I have a question about. Is there a certain amount of testing that must be done in order to confirm that the software is okay? I didn't quite get that. Is there a certain amount of testing that needs to be done in order to know that a software is sufficient, adequate, okay? Yes. Yeah, so I think with that, there is no level of testing that you can do. So because, again, it is really hard to determine. So you just test. The only thing is if you ensure that the critical areas are all tested, then you are good to go. So you have like 100% critical area free of defect or errors, and then the low area. And when we talk about low area, it's just that area that, you know, Whatever happened, it will never, it will not break the software. We can do without, with, without, without some of the area, without the issue. Though we know this, as Oliver said, that we can do without it. So we're talking about ninety-five to one hundred percent free of defect. But there is no level of you can't, you can't. There is no level that you can say yes, this is sufficient. There is no sufficient testing. Thank you very much. Are there any other questions from the gallery today? Any questions pertaining to the topic testing or related issues to testing?
All righty. What we're going to do is, um, you know, Ashma Farah had intended to come, depending on his time factor. So at this point, it is 1026. We've been here for an hour, two and a half hours. And it seems to me that he may not make it. So I think we're going to just go ahead and wrap it up. Uh, any final words from our OTEC pros? Bob, Oliver, Collins, Vincent, before we wrap it up. Well, yeah, I mean, you know, just um, talking about the topic at hand, testing, the, 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 the final rollout, you know, testing is the key, like we've all uh, explained here this evening, you know, we test, 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 and test until we can't test no more, you know, and then make sure as we test, we find issues, it's been fixed in each rollout, you know, the test we fix, test security, everything is being tested so that when we roll the product or when we roll it out to the, to the marketplace, we have the confidence that we have delivered what the customer is going to be satisfied with, you know. So the primary objective here is just to make sure the system goes out, the product goes out, and it is appreciated when the customers use them. <clears throat> Thank you, Bob. Yes. Um... Um, also in the security testing and in all the testing, all our products go, go through this process. So um, we should understand that um, when the CEO comes and tell us that um, this, that, we should understand that it's all process, 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 process. And uh, the tech guys in Hyderabad, they've done a wonderful job to take less than four years or three years to come out with all these products that we have. And it must go through all this testing. After they put put all these components together, they it must go through this testing. Without this testing, they cannot roll it. They cannot roll it out <clears throat> because they roll it out like our big bro Madi the Gamu said. As least listed some companies that roll out products and they crash. You know, so we must test this all the products. They must go through this process before we before we're able to roll them out. And I want to say thank you for everybody that are here. Thank you, Oliver. Vincent? Thank you, Antoline. So one thing I will say before uh, the planning, so before we start uh, the, the migration and everything, we need to be sure to communicate with the key stockholders about the time frame and the potential or downtime and also, we have also a safest way to back up the data to the cloud. And then from the cloud, we can use it to restore if anything happened, or maybe corrupting data, or maybe incorrect files or things like that. So this is uh, what we need, importantly, to put in hand before we start or do any migration. This is the two very important part of the migration as well. Thank you, Vincent. And finally, Bob. Collins. No, Colin, <laughs> oh, Colin, sorry. Got lost yeah. track of the four. Yeah. Collins, <laughs> Go Colin ahead, looks Collins. Like, Colin looks yeah, like he's does, on all right. Jeopardy. <laughs> yeah. Colin, Colin looks like he's on Jeopardy. He's got his hand up there to hit that unmute button. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, Go so ahead, just, Colin. Just, yeah. So I just want to thank everyone who attended this show, um, Friday Night Live. As we said, it wasn't, I hope we, we, we deliver what uh, we've tried to, uh, to deliver some of this information. So if you don't get it, don't worry. You know, there is no exam here for you to pass. It's just, um, just educative things. So we just come to just pass information for us to really appreciate those guys who are building the software on our behalf. And we just want to um, assure everyone that testing is the key. You know, mm. test is the key to any company. You, there is no product. You build any product without testing, no, you are bound to fail. Because, you know, it's not about building. Yes, we appreciate those who build, but if you miss something, what happened? You know, you miss your customer loyalty. You know, there's a lot of lawsuit waiting for you. Loss of jobs, you know, company closure, even loss of lives, you know. Just imagine everything is, con is computerized. So, a lot of things can go wrong if you don't really test properly. 
And that's why I always said, when it comes to on passive, testing is the key, especially for a company to hit this market. Company that's a startup company that the world is waiting, like on passive. We cannot go wrong. As Mr. Ashmore Farah always said, we cannot go wrong. Everything must be at least perfect for us to hit the market. And once we hit the market, game over. So I just want to thank everyone and see you again, maybe next Friday live, night live. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. And finally, we would like to allow Marty the floor if he has any parting comments or words. Uh, no, not really. Good night, everybody. <laughs> Thanks for coming. I, yeah. I talked enough, but for sure. Yeah, problem. Wait, wait, Thank wait, you. Wait, wait, uh, wait. I'd like to say something. All right. Oh, me too. No. <laughs> well, if we're, if we're just going to hang out till midnight, no, really. Listen, I want to give you a little advice. I gave it to you a couple months ago. I don't think it's going to happen again, but when Ash says, hey, guys, the back office is going to be down for a few hours, I thought everyone was actually really good about it. Save your registration link, you know, save it to your like text message messaging, text message to yourself. So in that process, you still can get, you only got 12 days, it's going to go like that, but you still can send mm -hmm. your link to individuals, even though the back office is down, at least you can get in those links. Just a quick little hint. And you only got 12 days, so giddy up. Lynn, I'm done. Thank you. All right. Ra, ra, ra. The Mr. Hey, 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 man, that I can't say hey, hey, hey very well, but I try. All right. I see that someone has their hand up. It's not really a hands up time, but uh, Carol, maybe one minute. This is really not a question and answer time. Okay. Thank you. Go ahead. I see Julie would like to say a few words. I'm mute, Carol. Hi, sorry, I'm driving, but I uh, just wanted to remind everyone, as we know, we are in transitions right now. So if you registered a new founder or if you anything not happening, please Julie, panic. you're going in and out, so you'll need to turn your video off. Julie, turn your video off, please. Can you hear okay. me? Is it much better? Best, much much better. Go, go ahead. Uh, awesome. Thank you, Lynn. Uh, I just wanted to let remind everyone um, that we are in transitions right now. So when you register a new person or sign into your account and it didn't work, your email went invalid, please make sure that you check every details. And if it doesn't work, please don't be panic. Just keep trying and be patient. And if you recently sent things in, um, and keep trying, and if it went through, let us know that you are all good, that you are all taken care so that we can uh, clean up our list on our end as well. Great job, all the tech po and Lynn and Ron. Thanks so much for doing this. Thank you, Julie. Thank you for all you thank do for you, the company. Thank and thank you for always helping Marty. Marty always says how much you're a crucial part of his task that he has to do. You're a big part of it. He appreciates you very, very much. Thank you, Julie. Uh, what thank were you, you going to say? Yeah, you're welcome. Uh, I, Ron, I was oh. just, I would just thank you everyone for praying for myself, for Marty and a lot of prayers out there it really, really helped. We really appreciate it. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Prayers do work. Prayers work for you. Prayers work for Ron for Marty and for so many others. So we thank you all for praying. All right, I see that Carol is very bound quickly, and determined. Yeah. She wants thank to you, Lynn. Very, very quickly, very, very quickly, very um, quickly. I live in Ontario, Toronto, Canada. Toronto is the city, Ontario is the province, and it's the country of Canada. Um, and I've just, um, I'll read you very quickly. I'll put it in the chat. Um, in 2011, one of our, and our Harper government, that was the uh, Prime Minister, um, the uh, Minister of, um, of Ontario, uh, he, they contracted IBM to develop a, payroll, a new payroll system for the federal government. By the time the project was passed, it was passed on to another government, the Justin 
the, the Trudeau, the Justin Trudeau, the Trudeau government that we got now, and it was already clear that Phoenix was plagued with problems. Despite this, the other unions sounding the alarm, Trudeau's government went ahead and launched the pay system. Since then, over 200,000 federal public service workers and their families have been impacted by Phoenix. Some have not been paid properly, others have gone unpaid for months at a time. They have experienced debt, loss, bankruptcy, and even homelessness. And it's still going on. This is because they did not test the system before they Thank adopted so a new, before they adopted a new system. Thank you very much. That very good example testing. of how testing is very important. Thank you for sharing mm -hmm. that, Carol. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. All righty. I think we're ready to wrap up. I want to thank our OTEC pros. They studied their topic and did it quite well. I think they covered it nicely and simply for all of us. Thank you to Marty DeGarma for opening up our webinar as usual. Thank you for Niraj because he interpreted and he was there for us in a pinch. Thank you to Bill Must who provides our Zoom background, which you see behind me. Thank you to uh, John Barilla for helping us with the chat. As you know, the chat is an integral part of any webinar, and he is always there for us. We thank you very much, John Barilla. Am I missing anybody, Ron? Thank you to Ron, my co-host. I'm just, grateful for Ron. I just want to say, I'm excited. Who's excited? Who is excited? Huh? Come on, show me them hands. Okay, What's let's go to the gallery. We'll go to it? the gallery. <laughs> we'll go to the gallery. Everybody, everybody who's excited, wave your hands or clap your hands or thumbs up, whatever you want to do. Oh my God. I just want to thank everybody for joining us tonight because we had an awesome crowd. We had up to 470 people on this webinar tonight. So that was that was awesome. And we really, Leonard, and I really, really appreciate you guys attending and asking the questions that you asked tonight. I think we had a great webinar, man. And uh, I wish we could skip a week and, and the 22nd be next week. But <laughs> we're going to have to wait. So it's like That's the right. Army. Hurry up and wait. So uh, <laughs> thank you, everybody, from, from me. You. And uh, that's all I got to say. And See as you. far as, yeah, and as far as Ash Mafara goes, he intended to be here. If he could have been here, he would have been here. There's a lot of variables when you're talking about a CEO as busy as he. So we give him a lot of grace and knowing that he wanted to be here with us. So he'll be with us here another time, I'm sure. So thank you for your understanding on that. Thank you to the attendees. Again, we had about 470 of you, which was fabulous. I, I also appreciate you for respecting our rules and for trying your very best to say your name and your country in your Zoom name. I know it's not easy for all of you, but I've seen a lot of improvement from week to week. So we do appreciate your efforts and also abiding by the rule of just two active hands at a time. You all did a fabulous job. Kudos to you. So we would like to see you from week to week. We'll have another Friday Night Live again next week, Friday, same time, same channel. Please spread the word. These are public webinars. We are going to be addressing topics that Ash Mofara wants us to talk about. So you know that when you come here, you're hearing things that Ash Mofara feels are critical for us to understand. And on the other hand, this is something for you to know as well. If you do not understand everything <coughs> that we share with you, don't fret, right, Ron? Because this right. information is optional. Just enjoy the learning. If you pick up this much, that's great. If you pick up this much, that's great too. Just enjoy learning and, and gaining knowledge. That's what I say. But certainly don't fret because remember, this is a done for you system. Automation, artificial intelligence will do all the work for us. So we needn't know any of the technical things, but it sure is interesting to learn about them, right, Ron? That's right. So we'll see you next week on Friday Night Live. And what I'm going to do now is unmute everybody. Everybody's on the gallery now, so everyone can see you. I'm going to unmute you, and you can say bye to one another. Go ahead. Good guys. Bye. Thank you, Ron and Lynn. Bye. 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 Bye.
Thank you. Thank you. Good night, everyone. Remain blessed.